Today we are talking Bear County business, especially two consultants hired to review one jail, the Bear County Jail. Yeah. Today at our Q&A, we have Precinct 3 County Commissioner Trish DeBerry joining us. Commissioner, thanks for being here. It's been a while since we've had you on this segment. So I want to start with that consultant issue. We know County Commissioners chose one consultant. Sheriff Javier Salazar has chosen a different consultant, but to review the same jail. So how is it? Why is it? that we've got two companies doing that job. So first of all, I think it's extremely inefficient that we have two consultants, especially since in July, when the sheriff came to us with a, yet another overtime request, uh, we asked him point blank, the judge and I asked him, listen, we are willing to get you help. Uh, will you work with the consultant that we hire? And his answer was, yes, I will work with that consultant. Because I really felt like, and I said at the court meeting in July, we consider this a lifeline, uh, not only to you, uh, but to taxpayers regarding the amount of money they're spending in overtime. And not just that, Myra and Steve, I mean, really, it's about humanity and the conditions at the jail. I think what gets lost in the conversation is that we're looking at saving taxpayer money and trying to get this under control. But it's really about, like I said, humane conditions within the jail regarding the detention guards. I get letters, I get direct messages uh, from the rank and file on a weekly basis uh, relative to zero quality of life. Uh, morale is at an all time low within the jail. They currently have 315 vacancies within that jail. So you have folks that are working mandatory overtime and not uh, being able to spend time with their families or their kids. And you know, at the end of the day, I was elected because I've got private sector experience. And so I'm constantly going to be looking for solutions. And that's not just, like I said, regarding taxpayer savings, but it's really about culture and morale and what you establish there. So my hope is that a consultant uh, will bring that to bear. Uh, you've been critical of the of the sheriff in the past. Uh, this time, though, I mean, is there any value in having Two studies. I mean, is there anything that's going to come out of a study that the sheriff's department pays for that you're going to take to heart? I mean, I, I, it just seems very odd that we're talking about two different studies from two very different sides of the issue here for one jail. Well, it's very disappointing uh, to me, Steve, because like I said, in July, we asked the sheriff, we hired a consultant, would you work with that consultant? And he said, yeah. So we began a due diligence and a process and a very robust process. You know, we had a list, we worked with staff regarding consultants for the jail. Uh, there was a short list of like three firms. I interviewed those firms, uh, talked to references, looked at case studies, you know, and we had landed on a consultant out of Florida who had really been a change agent at the Broward County Jail that was a mess at the time. Um, certainly, although from Florida, is very familiar with Texas jail standards, but I think that's what we're looking for was a change agent. So let me be clear about the fact we were on a path, we had a process. And the whole goal was that we hired a consultant that was completely independent from the sheriff. And so for him to kind of knee-jerk reaction, hire a consultant of his own that's been handpicked um, I don't think is fair to the court, nor do I think it's fair to the taxpayer, because at the end of the day, we stress independence. We wanted somebody to come in and take a close look, provide solutions. And the fact that the sheriff has handpicked his own consultant means really, I mean, is that the fox guarding the hen house? Is the sheriff really going to hear what he needs to hear or only what he wants to hear? So do we know at this point when these two reviews are going to be happening and who is going first, essentially? Well, I think we're on parallel parallel tracks. Um, my hope is that shortly after the first of the year, um, we will have a result really of the consultant that we had hired from the court standpoint to come in, take a look at the jail, offer um, his suggestions. And to the sheriff's credit, he has said he will let that consultant come into the jail. So. Look, my hope is, um, regardless of which consultant it is, that perhaps we merge the two together um, and we're able to come up with some very effective solutions because uh, there are very inhumane conditions at the jail right now. Like I said, with 315 vacancies um, and not being able to recruit and fill those positions as quickly as is need be. Taxpayers paid a high of $14 million this last fiscal year. And when we look at something called 
FLSA, which is the Fair Labor Standards Act, which means if there is a detention guard that works or a law enforcement officer that works more than 480 hours, we have to pay out regarding that tech too. And we are at an all time high of probably $3 million associated with that. So you look at jail overtime at 14 million, you look at FLSA at 3 million, that's $17 million that taxpayers are having to foot. It's unacceptable. You know, the issue of overtime within the sheriff's office, within the jail, that has been an issue for years, even prior to the current sheriff serving uh, as head of that department. So do you have any strategies that you would like to see implemented in terms of trying to decrease the amount of money that taxpayers are paying for that overtime? So completely agree. It's been a vexing problem for a very long time, but it has never, ever been at the rate that we have seen currently probably over the trajectory in the past five years. So, you know, I don't, I'm not a jail consultant, obviously, which is why I wanted to bring in an expert, but having private sector experience, that's why you bring in somebody that has outside experience. Let me reiterate, I've been asking for data and metrics since I got onto this court 10 months ago. I received zero information because I think the only way that we can make an informed decision and come up with a strategy, a real strategy regarding the jail. And let me be clear too, the jail is a beast. It's a vexing problem, but unless we have real data and math metrics regarding manpower allocation, you know, regarding recruitment, um, regarding the opportunity for somebody who works in detention, who probably by and large really wants to get out on the street and law enforcement and what that looks like, uh, we're gonna be destined to fail. So. You know, my heart really at the end of the day is with the rank and file because uh, there is a crisis, not only in culture and morale, but in efficiency in the jail. And the sheriff has been in office five years and he came into office saying that he was going to tackle this problem and he was going to figure it out. But the fact that there's zero, little to zero communication with the court regarding these issues is problematic. Um, and it hence the reason why we are in the situation we are in today regarding the consultant that we are hiring and the consultant that he is hiring. Trish, we're running out of time, but before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. You're sounding very much like a candidate tonight. Is there <laughs> any chance that you are looking at running for the judge of the commissioner's court? And do you think a Republican can win that position? That's a very interesting question, Steve. Um, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, I am the sole Republican on the court, which is why I ask very difficult questions, which sometimes ruffles a few feathers, but it's all about accountability. I would ask the same questions in my own business. If I was paying overtime consistently, I would say, what is happening here? How do we get a handle on the situation? So back to your question regarding uh, running for judge, look, the, the folks in Precinct 3 elected me to do a job in Precinct 3. And, you know, I think you know, I've been an advocate, obviously, for the taxpayer and a taxpayer champion for 10 months on the job. But um, I will tell you that I'm dedicated to serving the constituents of Precinct 3 at this point. And so if I was interested in running for county judge, I probably would have said so by now. It's not to say that, you know, at some point in the future that doesn't exist, but um, the constituents of Precinct 3 elected me to an office. And quite honestly, Steve, if I've got to give up my seat uh, to be able to run, that makes it very problematic for me. Yeah, and I like how your dogs have kind of inter have kind of have kind of yes, broken in there to okay. end this conversation. <laughs> they don't want you to run clearly. <laughs> well, Thanks. they want me to run them. Yes. There you go. Yes, there That's you the go. Running, they're or at least a in. nice walk. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Trish yeah. DeBerry, Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah. Good to see you guys. We'll be right back.